Hey, what's up folks? This is Jesse with Keeping Real Finance, channel that always has your back and tells it like it is. Well, I'm coming at you with your Friday update on Jasmine. So I've got a lot to cover. We had a big listing this week. We had a circulating supply update. So the shot heard around the world uh, posted thanks to one of the Redditors out there. Really big posts there. We also had some uh, big time uh, weaving of threads coming together. I'm gonna show you that with some stuff that Saiyan one k has been posting as well as uh, Zach Crypto Cracker. Uh, follow both of them if you're not already. Um, I'm gonna be talking about the Prime Minister of Japan and a speech that he gave this past week in the UK and what the implications were for JASME. So a big time speech on capitalism and sort of renewing the partnership between them and the UK. So that was a really big deal. Uh, we'll take a look at the chart. We'll take a look at coin market cap and those hodlers. And then we're gonna wrap up today's video with some final thoughts and stick around for that because I was really thinking last night pretty deeply about what does this actually look like? How does this actually work? And I wanna kind of throw this out there because I don't know if anybody 100% knows, but I wanna give you sort of an idea of what I'm thinking of how these personal data lockers really work, all right? So, uh, stick around to the end for all of that information. Should be a really good video. I've got a lot to cover here today. So hopefully this covers everything you need to know for this week for Jasmine. So if you enjoyed today's video, make sure to hit the like button. If this is your first time to the channel, make sure to subscribe. And if you click the bell, you'll be made aware whenever I post time-sensitive content just like this. And now, let's get it going. All right, so good morning and happy Friday to everybody out there. It's morning where I'm at, it may be evening where you are. I know we've got users from all over the planet, so big thanks to all of you for watching the videos, supporting the channel. Greatly appreciate it, super exciting to be part of a project like Jasmine and follow this one, invest in it, et cetera. Um, wanted to kick this video off with a little bit of a, a funny uh, joke here that I found online. And this all ties back into, so yesterday in the stock market, it dropped 1,000 points. When that happened, it tanked Bitcoin, dropped it below the bottom trend line, then that tanked the whole crypto market. Now, essentially, we're you know starting all over. So, great. So, I found this, and I thought it was really funny. Uh, for anybody who doesn't know who these two guys are, they used to be on a TV show called the Orange County uh, Choppers, I think is what it was. Uh, that was the name of their company. They were a motorcycle, custom motorcycle builder in upstate New York. They would make these really, really cool bikes, and they got really popular for a little while. Well, they were known on the show because the father and the son, uh, Paul Sr. and Paul Jr., never got along, ever. And so they were constantly yelling at each other. So that's why half the reason this show was so entertaining. Now, eventually they split up. I don't know if they ever truly got back together. But somebody applied one of their arguments essentially to the market. And I thought this was really funny. So Paul Sr. says, buy the dip. And Paul Jr. says, I already bought. And he says, buy it again. And he says, it keeps dipping. And then he yells at him, buy some more. And he says, I'm out of money and leaves. <laughs> Now, I think that's kind of a microcosm for how all of us feel right now. Uh, you know, I saw another post on Reddit where somebody said something about they're not selling because they're already down 99%. <laughs> so pretty hilarious there. You know, what I would say for any uh, anecdote for anybody um, who, you know, this kind of thing makes you nervous, markets always go up, they go down, they rebound. That's what they do. Um, and the reason that people who are steady investors, usually people who invest in like retirement accounts, they kind of contribute, you know, every other week, whatever. They're just mindlessly investing. They usually come out ahead. And it's because at times like this, they don't get nervous and they just keep on buying, right? So they buy at the bottom, they buy at the top, and, you know, eventually it's, it's all kind of a wash at the end of the day. Now, moving forward, wanted to move over to Twitter. So Hara was uh, surprisingly pretty quiet this week. He really hasn't posted a whole lot. Um, one thing that he did post here was uh, that KuCoin released their video. So if you saw my video last week, KuCoin had done a poll. And it was between um, Jasmine and two other coins. I don't remember what they were off the top of my head. But uh, they said, you know, which one of these three should we do a video on? And it was a resounding Jasmine for the win. So the video came out. I watched it. And I got to admit, I was pretty underwhelmed. So, you know, it's, it's great PR. Love the PR. But the video itself, the guy looked like he was in, you know, an RV 
It had about the camera quality of like a camcorder from the 90s. Um, clearly just reading right off the laptop. Kind of seemed like he really had no idea what Jasmine was or how any of it worked. Um, and, and then it kind of just went from that straight into a um, edited sort of animated version of every image they could possibly find out of the white paper and it really didn't flow very well. So I watched it. I was, I was a bit kind of disappointed in it. You know, um, I, I thought coming from KuCoin, it should have been a lot more high quality. And, you know, I'm going to give a big shout out right here to Swissborg. So if you've never heard of Swissborg, um, they are a exchange obviously based in Europe check out their YouTube page if you want to see high quality videos. They are ex very high quality. I mean, really, really good. And I want to say they have more than one channel. So for KuCoin, who's got way more users to not have uh, video content of that quality, it, it was just sort of odd. Yeah, I, I don't know, um, you know, where the video was shot or anything like that, but it it left a lot on the table. I'll just leave it at that. All right. So moving up uh, throughout the week, obviously there was a post here from Zach, uh, Learn Cryptology. Give him a follow if you haven't already. He's part of our group, uh, as well as our call that we've been doing every Sunday. Um, I'm not going to cover any of his content. I'm going to let him uh, cover all of that for you. Uh, you know, we, we try to make it so it's not an echo chamber, so we're not repeating over each other or anything like that. So by all means, go check out his channel. And if you got any questions, post them here for him. Um, regarding Jasmine, he, he's really good at looking into the uh, ether scan numbers, supply, et cetera, right? So I'll let him cover that. Now, moving up forward, this was kind of funny. I may as well just share this. I posted this earlier in the week that this is why I felt like with my DCA, just gobbling up Jasmine, PDEX, and Kadena is uh, really, you know, my big three right now that I've been looking at. So I thought that was really um, fitting, you know, Patrick eating Krabby Patties. Now, here's another one from uh, saying this is Blake. So he and Zach uh, learned cryptology. Uh, they are both really, really good at sort of connecting and weaving together these threads under the surface of connections that could be possible um, with Jasmine. And this is one of those where he was sort of tying together uh, Daimler into uh, Azure and this uh, Einride tech. So check out that post from him. Really, really interesting stuff. And I'm going to be sharing another one uh, that he he saw some breadcrumbs he gave me that I was kind of following earlier in the week that, that led to some pretty interesting stuff also. So I'll be showing you that in a second. Now, moving up, this was the first big bomb that dropped earlier in the week. So big shout out to Fat Panda Frank for tagging me in this post, as well as the other one on circulating supply. Fat Panda Frank is uh, on the Johnny on the spot for this stuff. So big shout out to you. He's a member, obviously, of the Jasmine community. Um, but he uh, tagged us in a post saying, look at that. They did the uh, Binance US listing. So we've been talking about this for the last couple of weeks that, you know, the big, the big, uh, Rocks that were still out there was Binance US, Gemini, as well as potentially a Robin Hood, something like that down the road. Well, lo and behold, now we have Binance US. So that's another big ex exchange that we can take off the list that Jasmine is now being traded on. So found that to be super bullish uh, on that post. This one here. So if you're on CT, there's this bot that says, Bob, Binance, big buys alert. And here's one of them that it posted. It posts a lot of these on Jasmine, but here's one at $609,000 worth of Jasmine was bought. That's a big time buy, all right? And we'll talk about that more in a second too. You know, I'm, I, And the final thoughts of this video, I'm really gonna kind of just go off the cuff and sort of brainstorm a little bit. And I'll let you know what I've been thinking about here. Now, moving up here, so Fat Panda Frank, this was the other post that I was talking about. Uh, he mentioned that somebody on Reddit, and I've seen the actual Reddit post as well, said that the uh, circulating supply has been self-reported and it's significantly higher. Interesting. So let me show you what that looks like on Coin Market Cap. So here's the Jasmine page for Coin Market Cap. Um, before I show you that, I may as well just show you, you know, the hodlers here. I'm going to refer to this as Mount Jasmine because uh, we keep building it. Mount Jasmine is getting bigger by the day, right? 
So uh, currently right now, 26,391 hodlers. My goal all along has been 40,000 by the end of the year. I think that's more than doable. We'll see what happens, but uh, Mount Jasmine is getting bigger and bigger. So very bullish on that front, all right? Now, here's what that Redditor um, had posted about. So when you look at circulating supply, and this was another thing in that KuCoin video, he said, this is the circulating supply. No, it's not, dude. <laughs> like, like, you really don't know uh, very much about this project. So I proved in my video last week that circulating supply, at the very least, at a baseline, was nearly 27%. Now, in that video, um, what I was looking at was on Etherscan. We only have 20 pages of data to look at. And all I did was I added up all of the known wallets, the ones that say Binance or Coinbase or whatever. We added up all those. All the anonymous ones I did not add, okay? Now, when I added them all up, they were roughly 27%. Now, I said at the end of the video that I, I thought the actual supply was uh, at least double that, if not a little bit higher. And so reasoning why, so first of all, in all the exchanges that I was adding up, uh, it was only a handful of them. And we know that Jasmine is on like, you know, every exchange that you can think about with the exception of Gemini and Robinhood, pretty much. So none of those other ones were in there. So I knew there had to be a lot more coins out there because you can't buy coins on an exchange if there's no coins. So how do the coins get there? Well, Jasmine sends some coins, right? Um, this is part of the dilution that happened over the first 25 weeks of IR. That's why the price kept going down is because they kept adding exchanges. They kept having to put out coins, right? Um, the reason all that slows down moving forward is because now we're already out, out on nearly all of these exchanges, right? We're out almost everywhere. So um, that was a really big reason uh, why on that, um, on uh, the, uh, I'm having a brain fart here. This happens sometimes Monday morning. You know, maybe I need a little more coffee. <laughs> But anyhow, um, so on Etherscan, when I was looking at the supply numbers, uh, that had to do a big part of it. And the other side of it, here you go, now it's finally came to me, is the cold storage wallets. So Coinbase is known for having cold storage wallets. And I I previously cited this in one of my videos, you know, probably a month, two months, three months ago, whenever it was. And I cited a Medium article by Veracity, this is VRA token, right? Uh, where they said that we're frustrated with circulating supply on CoinMarketCap because they won't update it. And CoinMarketCap basically said that we have our own algorithm and um, what we're not counting is any coins in cold storage. And supposedly Coinbase in particular puts a lot of coins in cold storage. Now Binance does not. So if you're looking at Jasmine on Etherscan, Binance is going to show an absolute truckload of coins between probably three or four different outlets, uh, outlets, wallets, excuse me. <laughs> now, um, Coinbase, on the other hand, will just show, you know, Coinbase 6. But if you actually follow the transactions, there's lots of sort of anonymous wallets that go in and out with Coinbase 6. And so that's another reason there why I thought the supply was at least double, if not a little bit higher than that. So the user then pointed this out, the Redditor, and this, uh, you know, I find this ironic because, first of all, th this number here is very misleading that coin market cap posts. Now they say that they verified this number. Okay, great, right? Well, the interesting thing is if you highlight over the check mark in particular, that's where this changes. Look, so it says verified data. So the coin market cap team has verified the circulating supply at 10%. Okay, great. But look down here. It, whoops, it says self-reported supply, 30.8 billion. Self-reported. That's coming from Jasmine. And it says self-reported market cap, $512 million. I mean, this is like the light bulb going off right here, right? So, you know. It's just so misleading from coin market cap. First of all, I don't care what your number is. I want to know what the project has released. And the project is saying we've released more. So it's it's baffling to me why coin market cap does not update to what the project says. Here's what we've released. <laughs> Crazy, right? So when you do the actual math on this, uh, what that means is that nearly 62% of the supply is out there. So that's an increase of 
percent on top of that original 10 percent of supply i mean come on coin market cap you know so basically jasme has told the truth they have put the right numbers out there and coin market cap is not updating it uh that's a head scratcher to me you know this is the kind of thing with coin market cap they really need to go back to the drawing board um you know another thing that i've talked about here is you know they say they verified it well when when did you verify it there's no time stamp there's no schedule you don't tell me when you're going to look at it again. You don't tell me when you're going to analyze anything that was sent in by Jasmine. You don't tell me anything at all. You just simply say it's 10%. And, uh, you know, going back to, you know, the KuCoin video, that's exactly what he cited. Hey, it's 10%. Well, no, it's not. It's actually like 62%. So um, what that means overall is, first of all, it means a heck of a lot more coins um, are on the market, which would make sense to correspond with all of the various exchanges. Um, it also means that, you know, in terms of the supply, there's uh, about, you know, 19.2 billion that's still being withheld. I saw a, uh, a Reddit post where they added up all of the, um, the 500 million token wallets, the 400 millions, the 300 millions, et cetera, as well as maybe the deployer, I want to say. And all of it came to somewhere right near 19.2 billion. So it seems like that's where all the rest of those coins are held. Okay. Um, so basically, this this was very eye opening. And you know, again, shame on you, Coin Market Cap, for giving people the wrong info. You know, the implications here. First of all, you know, we look at our market cap, and the market cap is you know under 80 million. Well, the real market cap's 512 million. You know, when it's under 80 million, you, you kind of think, what, what is Jasmine? Like three guys sitting in a room in Japan? Well, 512 million, this is much, much larger than that. All right. And, and that's part of the implication here. So it's it's very misleading what's posted here on CoinMarketCap. All right. So that's enough bashing on that front. Now, let me show you a couple other things. So this is going back to Saiyan. And uh, give him a follow if you're not already. He's the uh, usually the leader of our uh, our call that we do. He's he's the main host, and he put, like I said, he posts a lot of really cool things that kind of tie these threads together. Well, he posted this, and I'm not sure if he shared this publicly or not, but it says blockchain based digital rights management, and so it's a patent application that went through, right? And the interesting thing, and I do this a lot, so if you do like a control F and you look for locker. So in particular, I was, I was curious about those uh, personal data lockers, right? Well, basically this whole patent, there's eight different sightings to locker. So interoperability, many current DRM solutions typically require a rights locker or other common storage that's managed by a vendor, AKA a Jasmine, right? <laughs> uh, conventional solutions may not be very reliable, rely on one unique point of failure, um, if the rights locker provider or system goes out of business or otherwise fails, the loser, uh, user loses all of the acquired content, right? Problem. Uh, many in interoperable solutions today are based on common architecture that stores the usage rights of a piece of content uh, into a license dedicated to one user, one specific platform, yada, yada, yada. Okay. So going on and on and on, and it just talks all about these rights lockers and that's that's kind of where this starts now what where it gets really interesting in this whole patent is at the very bottom so at the very bottom here it says patent history who's the inventor eric deal culver city california so i click that link and then that takes us to this page here so patents by inventor eric deal now he's got in this patent page um, I want to say it was, it's like seven pages worth of patents. Like he's applied for over 100 patents. Look at this blockchain based digital rights management. Aha. Uh -huh. You know, that's kind of your, your Jasmine, uh, thing right there. Hey, look who it's assigned to Sony corporation. Boy, that's weird, right? <laughs> you know, it goes on and on. So, you know, four factor. Um, authentication, visual enrollment of cameras, privacy uh, pr preserving signature, point cloud scrambling, confirming geolocation of a device. 
This is a big one. Like this is the kind of thing that ties into driverless cars and blockchain is geolocation, right? Um, you know, secure distribution of multi-resolution point cloud. Really, really interesting stuff from Eric Deal. Now, I wanted to show you. Let me let me open this um, image here. I took this from LinkedIn with Eric Deal. So this is him. So he is the VP of Media and Content Security at Sony Pictures Entertainment. Interesting, right? Really, really interesting. And it says here, accomplished innovator in digital media environment, proven visionary, um, executive leading a high level technology group, recognized as thought leader in content security. So a big part of Jasmi is all about securing your data and the personal data lockers. That's exactly what Eric Deal is focused on here. Now, granted, Eric Deal works for Sony Pictures, but this is still Sony. It's a Sony tie, you know, so it's another Sony relationship. And, you know, it, he makes reference here that he's filed over 100 patents. And, uh, you know, personal story here, when I was in college, I had a professor who was very similar to this that had filed over 100 patents you know, he had like multiple doctorate degrees. He was an airplane pilot. He flew to Washington every week. And every time I sat in his class, I felt like I got smarter like tenfold just being around that guy, right? So I know the exact kind of person that Eric Deal is. I'm, I'm totally reading what he's throwing down, right? <laughs> now, I also mentioned, so um, here were my thoughts on this that essentially he has multiple pages of patents that center around the security of data, privacy of data, blockchain, and geolocations. Okay, and all of his patents, all of this dates back all the way to 1990. So really, really good find by saying 1K on this one with this uh, patent application that ties into Eric Deal, that ties back into Sony. Really, really interesting, okay? Now, I wanted to show something else here because this was also very fascinating. So this story came out of uh, Nikkei Asia, and it's a transcript from the Japan Prime Minister Kishida's speech in London. So it says, invest in Kishida. Uh, Japanese leader reaffirms ties with the UK, calls for a new form of capitalism, right? Okay. Now, I went through this whole article and I took some screenshots of the highlights. So I wanna show those to you now. So here is the first one. So from Nikkei Asia. So he says, to this end, we will articulate a national strategy in five fields. Now, what's really important here is two of these five fields. One of them is AI. Jasmi is working AI, okay? So that ties into Jasmi. Another one here, it says digital. Again, Jasmine, right? So it says strong incentives will be offered to companies that increase R&D investment in accordance with the national strategy. That is exactly what Jasmine is doing, and they're approved by the government. So big time um, shout out there, right? Now, let me go to the next one, because all of these were really interesting. Um, this one here, so here's another snippet from that. So he says, when you hear Japanese companies, you probably think of major corporations like Honda and, lo and behold, Sony. But these large companies, which have been the driving force for Japan, were originally startups founded by young entrepreneurs shortly after World War II. So it mentions here that Sony was founded by a young entrepreneur at 25 years old in 1946, Marita uh, uh, Akayo. Okay, I'm probably saying that wrong. Um, but... That's what they're focusing on. So startups. So what is Jasmine? Well, technically, it's sort of a, it's basically a startup. Now, it didn't start up yesterday. It started up in 2016, but it is a startup with members of Sony, ex Sony employees, right? Sony execs. So I thought that was awesome. Also, so again, the Sony tie that ties into Jasmine. Now, the last one here. This was really important. So in this last snippet, he says, um, digital services are also a source of new added value 
and a key to solving the challenges as we see in Japan's rural areas, such as declining birth rates, aging, and declining populations. Now he says, Japan will develop an environment for the promotion of Web 3.0. This is exactly what you asked me is, Internet of Things, Web 3.0, such as blockchain, NFTs, and the metaverse. This screams Jasmine. This is this has Jasmine written all over it. Um, and, and then he says, you know, an achieve a society that facilitates the birth of new services. So um, what does this say? In, in so doing, systems and regulations that are unfit for technological advances need to be closely reviewed. So it tells you that they want to be a leader in the world when it comes to blockchain, web 3.0, NFTs, and the metaverse. All of these are covered under the Jasmine umbrella. So that was extremely bullish to see that post from the prime minister, um, which falls directly right into what Jasmine does with their business. So really, really bullish on that. And what you got to realize here is he is marketing this to the UK as UK partnership, telling the UK, hey, you need to uh, take a look at Japan and invest in Japan. Well, how can you invest in Japan on this front? You can invest in Jasmine. That's exactly what you can do. Okay. So um, now not to say that the UK doesn't have their own um, IoT cryptocurrencies. They do. You know, there's uh, Fetch is there. Um, I want to say, uh, I think Quant is in the UK. There's some other ones that that uh, deal in similar areas, but aren't quite the same. Where Jasmine is different is the personal data lockers, okay? So, found that to be very, very bullish. Now, lastly, I just wanted to share here, going over to TradingView, what Jasmine looks like. So, here we are on TradingView, right? Here's the current chart. Here's the current support. We're near the bottom. Reason why, again, is because the stock market tanked, causing Bitcoin to tank, causing crypto to tank. But Jasmine's holding its own pretty well here. It really is. And so ultimately, if it turns out that, you know, the stock market's just going to tear down everything for a while, again, this is why you DCA. This is why you do not sink like, you know, hey, I got, you know, 50 grand to throw in tomorrow. You really need to do a DCA because when you DCA, if it goes lower, then you keep buying lower. But if you put all your eggs in at once and then it drops, then you're out of luck. Like anybody who bought, you know, let's say, near 30 cents or something like that. So overall, we are um, holding. And, uh, you know, this is interesting, too. I don't know if you can see this on the TV, but I noticed this recently, this little blue line. And I thought, hey, is that one of my lines? How did that get there? You know what that is? That's the uh, the 200 day moving average. <laughs> so for our chart to be bullish, to be bullish, the red line needs to be above this blue line way up here. And the green line also needs to be above that to be in a bullish pattern. So we are firmly in a bearish pattern overall, considering that is the 200 day moving average. Okay. So we would have to get well above seven cents in order to get back bullish on the Jasmine chart. Now, over time, that absolutely will happen, but uh, we're nowhere near that at the moment. And I've, I've said it many times on this channel. I'll say it again, that when you want to be doing your DCA is when the market is bare or sideways. So that's pretty much what we've been in all for you know quite a while now, sideways and bear, sideways and bear. We're kind of bouncing back and forth. We've we've never really firmly flipped bullish. And you know, I keep hoping that an end to the war will will do that. Um, but it hasn't happened just yet. So anyhow, in the meantime, bearish um and sideways, it's a great time to DCA. And, uh, you know, I've, I've also mentioned before, that's exactly what I do. That's my strategy. That's me and the Krabby Patties like Patrick. <laughs> all right. So with all of that, I'm going to be wrapping up this video with some final thoughts uh, in a couple minutes and stick around for that because I really want to kind of brainstorm this idea of the personal data locker. All right. Here at the Keeping It Real Finance channel, we need your support. All of the content on this channel is entirely organic, meaning we did the video on a topic that we simply like, or we did it because of a request from one of you, our viewers. So that being said, if you enjoyed today's video and would like to support the channel, there are multiple ways you can do that to help us to continue to create and level up our content. Our affiliate links will be available in the video description to cover platforms we endorse and use ourselves. 
Support the channel today and earn sign-up bonuses along the way. We also have a merch shop available with links below the video or directly by visiting curefinance.myspreadshop.com where we offer tons of great designs and product options. We've got everyone in the family covered. Help support us by picking up merch and sharing your photo on social media. We may even send you an NFT. Speaking of NFTs, at OpenSea.io we have our NFT series, The Liberty or Death Crossroads, available now. Pick one up today and enjoy special upcoming perks and exclusive content with our planned upcoming courses, Patreon, and Discord group. If you're a reader and simply looking to step up your game in personal finance, I also wrote a book in 2015 titled Driving Through Potholes, Financial Strategy and Life Lessons for Those Looking to Rediscover the American Dream. The book is available now at Amazon in Kindle and paperback. And lastly, if you'd simply like one-on-one -on -one consulting, feel free to reach out anytime at keepingitrealsince1982 at gmail.com. We greatly appreciate your support today, and now let's get back to the video. All right, so for some final thoughts today. First of all, obviously the Binance.us listing was huge. We've been calling for that one, and lo and behold, they did it. So cross that one off the list. Now we just have Gemini, potentially Robinhood down the road. Really big deal. Um, and it further uh, expands the ability of anybody to pick up Jasmine pretty much anywhere in the world. So really good listing on that one, right? Uh, the next big shot, the circulating supply update. So when I saw those actual numbers, I thought, holy crap, this is exactly what I was talking about in my circulating supply number. It, it was nearly right on, basically a little bit more than double was what I thought, and that's exactly where it came out. So it, it just kind of kills me that coin market cap doesn't update this. I don't care what you think. I care what Jasmine the Project thinks. Jasmine the Project owns the wallets. They're in charge of this thing. If they say more coins are out there, then more, more uh, coins are out there, and you need to update the number, right? <laughs> so they haven't updated the number. We don't have a schedule when they will. Uh, we don't know when they updated it last. They just put a little blue check mark on there, whoop to do It's totally wrong, so that's great. And the implications of this, like I mentioned earlier, are that the market cap of Jasmine is significantly higher. There is way more money in this than what it makes it look like on coin market cap. So when you think about a project getting big, going global, expanding into the U.S., partnership with Britain potentially, right, uh, per the prime minister, British investment, all these things kind of coming together. Jasmine is a really big project at the forefront of this for Japan. All of the Sony ties, all this stuff matters. And when you see the coin market cap saying 10% of supply that gets repeated by the guy on KuCoin who doesn't know anything, it just kills me, right? And you know, going back to that KuCoin video, I, you know, I don't want to be just bashing because, I, look, I get bashed all the time on this channel. I even got, you know, a really funny one the other day where somebody said something about, uh, I need a de-esser on my microphone. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious, right? Look, I've got a microphone. I've got an interface. I, I don't know. I'll work on it, okay? That being said, I'm always working on, on, on it. I'm always trying to level up my content. Uh, but the video that came out from KuCoin was just underwhelming. I mean, it was, it, you could tell the guy didn't know anything about it. You could tell he was just reading off the laptop. All the images that were sort of spliced together didn't really come together properly. It didn't flow at all. And then it, it was just sort of over. So <laughs> I guess it's good in the sense that we got, you know, a video promoting Jasmine out to another 50,000 subscribers. That's bullish. Uh, but the video itself is very underwhelming. And like I mentioned earlier, if you really want to see good content coming from a centralized exchange, look at Swissborg. I mean, it is really, really good. I've seen their videos and I'm like, wow, like these guys are on top of it. This is what I need to be doing. So, you know, I watch their videos and I think my videos are crap. And then I watch that and I go, wow. So I think with the KuCoin guy, it's like if he was on his own channel somewhere, then fine, I, you know, no issues with it. But that's KuCoin. I, you know, they got like million, 20 million plus users. I mean, come on, man. Um, anyways, that, that's enough on that. <laughs> so uh, going then to Eric Deal and all those patents that sent around blockchain, he's another Sony tie, and he's in California. This could tie into Ken Mura with the Jasmine expansion in California. Super bullish on that note. Now, 
for the part about the personal data lockers. So I've been thinking about these uh, for a couple days now. I was really thinking about it last night. What does it really mean, a personal data locker, and how does this really work, right? And so think of it like a box, right? And so in this box, we have a door on one side and a door on the other side. So the door on this side is the, the user who's supplying their data, right? It's like anybody that puts all their data on Facebook, for example. So you're putting all of your data into the box, okay? Well, on the other side, we have a door for the companies. And so for the sake of an example, let's use that Nippon travel agency that they already have a partnership with, right? So Nippon wants access to that data. Now, how are they going to get access to open that door? Well, they're going to need JASME. JASME is a utility token, okay? They're not going to be putting yen in the door to then get access to have it unlocked. They need to put JASME in there. So they need to be buying a large amount of JASME to then put into the locker. And then what we need to know, like this is one of the things we don't really know is, what, what actually is the price of the data, okay? So I've talked about this before that with Facebook on, in 2021, they said the average uh, data per user was $41 as of 2021. That's not even 2022, so 41 bucks. So let's say for this year, let's say it's $50, okay? So for Nippon to get access to users, what is the actual price that Jasmine is charging? I don't know yet. I don't know what that price is. Is it a discounted price or is it, let's say, market market average? Let's say the market average for 2022 is $50 per user. So if Nippon were to pay $50 per user and get access for the entire year to that user's data, then that could, that could be how it works. So they pay $50 worth of Jasmine into there. Now, obviously, how, how would JASME, the project, make money? Well, it's gotta, um, it's gotta collect a fee somewhere in this process, right? So it's not going to be collecting the fee off the user who gets paid. It would probably be collecting the fee off the company who wants access to the user's data. So they would collect a fee there, and then the next percentage of this would then roll over to the users who would then be compensated for their data with whatever amount there is. So they may charge, if you think about it, they could be charging the institution, let's say $50 a user, but then they could say for the user, well, we're, we're, because we're starting fresh, we're gonna be paying you $25 per user for your data. So the $25 is not paid in yen, it's not paid in USD, it would be paid in JASME because it's a utility token. So the way that all this has to work essentially is through a wallet. Now they don't have a public wallet out there yet. They haven't announced it yet, but they did announce in a recent article that they do have a wallet. So I know they're designing one. I know it's in the works. It's just not out yet, all right? So really interesting when you think about that. Now going back to Nippon Travel Agency. So do they just want the data of one user? No, of course not. They need a much larger sample size, right? So let's say they want 10,000 users and that's gonna be 10,000 times $50, right? So you look at it and you can kind of see where the large buys coming through Binance could be coming from, potentially. This could be companies making large buys so that they're getting a large amount of JASME tokens. Then they go to that data locker, they basically pay into it with which, whatever the fee is, JASME, the cryptocurrency, takes their cut of that, and then they would then pay the user for their data with JASME token. So you can see where all the large buys come in. Now, where the institutions are not going to be buying is straight from JASME. That's not, that's not how this works. You know, they would be buying it off an exchange. So that's, that's where the data is coming from. So, I, you know, the more I thought about this, I thought, you know, I bet that's how it works. Something similar to that. Now, we really don't have any clear info around this, but this is how I foresee at least the personal data locker part working, all right? Now, there are way more aspects to Jasmine the coin than just the personal data lockers. We've got the secure PC uh, with their, quote, contact center, which in the US we would call this a call center, okay? So that's securing um, 
and securing the info, the data that's coming through there, keeping it secure, et cetera, especially when all of these uh, call center employees, for many of them, have gone remote. So that's the whole idea here. Well, now you're a remote employee, we gotta make sure all the data's secure and it's not being compromised, because now you're at home, you're on your home network, you got your viruses on your network, your printer's tied into something, you could have your neighbor hacking into your stuff, you don't even know it, whatever. So basically, that's another side of this. Now, going to the geolocation part. So, Jasmine isn't the only uh, cryptocurrency that's working on this. There are numerous ones that are working on geolocation. Um, for example, uh, XYO network. So, uh, XY, it's XY coordinates is what it is, okay? So, there, there's quite a few of them out there. I want to say uh, Constellation, I think, was doing this too. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, Fetch, and Fetch is based in, in the UK. Uh, they're doing this. There they're are quite a few out there that are doing this. Um, but what you got to remember is that Jasmine is one of the very few approved cryptocurrencies that has this technology. They have the corporate relationships. Um, it, they are set up. They have government support all the way to the prime minister. We've proven that. Uh, and, you know, they are a leader of this market. And because there have only been, I, I want to say it was them and just a handful of others have been approved in the, the Japanese market, that they really have... Um, they're the first mover into that market, right? They have the ability to gain significant market share right up front. Um, you know, they've also got sponsorships. They've got, uh, you know, NFTs. You know, we we're talking about metaverse, right? There's so many ways that that can go. And so there's, there's just a really wide umbrella to the JASME project as a whole. And when you really start connecting all those various threads, like I mentioned that, you know, Blake is really good at and Zach is really good at, then you can kind of start tying all this stuff together and you go, oh my gosh, this is way bigger than I ever even imagined it could be. And so eventually what I would like to see, and I've talked about this before, but I don't know if everybody understands this, is that right now Jasmine is an ERC20 token, meaning it's built on the Ethereum blockchain. What Jasmine needs is their own uh, mainnet and native token, okay? So a lot of other projects do this. I talk a lot about uh, Pokedex. They're a good example. They did the exact same thing. You know, they start with an ERC-20 token and eventually they shift to their own native token. Well, what that means is that once you have a native token, then you can stake it on their native mainnet. And when you do, you help secure the network and you can also get rewards. So there's even more utility for the Jasmi coin. This is sort of what we need to happen. Now, they haven't done this yet, and my thought on this, here's the reason why, is there is no mainnet yet. There is not a mainnet. So because there is no mainnet, they can only work and offer staking uh, through a platform that offers staking without a, for a coin that does not have a mainnet. And who does this? Lo and behold, Binance, right? That's exactly it, Binance. So, you know, a lot of people have been talking about, well, will Binance US offer staking? Maybe. I don't know. You know, Binance US is kind of like if we took a, uh, what well, 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 would be a good way to look at this? Maybe if we took like a watermelon. Let's say that Binance is a watermelon, okay? And we basically cut out one little piece of it. And we said, here you go, that's Binance US. And the other 98% of the watermelons over here for everyone else around the world who has the ability to do whatever they want with it. That's the problem with Binance US. It is so limited, it offers next to nothing. Granted, they have been adding more and more coins, uh, but they really need to get better in terms of staking and some other stuff. So hopefully they get there regulatory wise. You know, the real problem here in the US, and this is maybe a little bit of a soapbox, maybe a little off topic, but it's kind of on topic is that the IRS treats crypto like it's a security, which in some aspects of it, maybe. The only aspect of it that I think it's a security is that it's listed on an exchange. Now with cryptocurrencies, we are not uh, watching them quarterly to see their quarterly results. That's not how this works. Um, a lot of them uh, operate simply as currencies, okay? Uh, we also have these currencies that you stake it on mainnet. What you're doing is you're securing the mainnet, you get governance rights, the ability to vote, you're securing the network. This is not a security. I'm not realizing a gain. Um, so, you know, all of that kind of ties into why Jasmine US really just hasn't been able to offer 
anything. And it's because of bad US law and it's because of bad US regulations that don't follow and don't keep up with technology. And the vast majority of those that are uh, within the, the representatives, etc., don't understand this. I'd be happy to explain it to them. Okay, really would. I'd be happy to explain it to them. And, you know, along those same lines, I may as well say this too that, uh, you know, in all the videos that I've ever done on Jasmine on this channel, and there's quite a lot of them, I've never been compensated by Jasmine. I'm not a paid shiller. I don't work for the company. Nothing. I've never even had Hara respond to a tweet. Nothing. Yeah, no tweet, no retweet. Uh, no thanks for the video, absolutely nothing. But he did retweet the KuCoin video, which was, uh, you know, less than stellar. <laughs> so, hey, Hara, how about a shout out sometime to any of us that are constantly talking about this? There's quite a big group of us. We should be acknowledged at some point, all right? So that's it for today's video. Hopefully that covers pretty much everything when it comes to Jasmine. If you got any questions, concerns, leave them in the comments. Uh, be happy to talk about them. When it comes to the circulating supply, obviously I'm sure uh, Zach uh, learned cryptology. He'll probably be covering some of that in his videos. And uh, so by all means, check those out when he posts them, uh, real big deal. Uh, we should be having another call, hopefully this weekend on Sunday. I don't know if Blake has posted it yet. Uh, we've been doing them Sunday evenings, but that may fluctuate depending on, uh, as I mentioned, Jasmine is a global community. There are followers here from all over the world. We totally get that. And uh, really, you know, all of us are just enthusiasts who have found this. And the more we dig into it, the more impressed we are is, is kind of the group consensus here. So. Um, hopefully this video helped out with that, right? So if you enjoyed today's video, make sure to hit the like button. Don't forget that I'm also on Twitter at KIR Finance, where you can find me tweeting and retweeting, so check me out there. And lastly, for a friendly reminder, this is Jesse, or Kerr, which most people call me. <laughs> and uh, uh, I will see you on the next one. Later. <laughs>